Who's in chess? Who's reaction? This is DARPA's newest X plane. It's a hybrid recon aircraft. Ah, uh, how many planes are underway, man? Wait a minute. XRQ seventy three Shepard seventy three seventy three. Is this SR seventy three? But isn't the son of uh, Blackbird or something? No, wait a minute. This is SR seventy two. So this is X XRQ seventy three. How many planes are like that? This is also something called Dark Star, if I remember correctly. Too many things are underway, and this is from DARPA. DARPA is insane. That's all I'm gonna say. Like U.S. has a lot of agencies and groups and things uh, that they do in different way, but DARPA is like top of all of them. DARPA creates shit that people use later on, and basically creates a whole economies, right? A lot of things in today's world, basically, I'm pretty sure like more than half of the world's economy could be traced back to something something DARPA did. That's how insane DARPA is. Right, so DARPA is basically U.S.'s version of something that just researches and like creates the next generation of things like this. Right, that's what DARPA's initials are, I guess. Uh, D A Defense, I don't know, but yeah, that's what DARPA is. Right, so DARPA's next plane. So, which company is making it? So DARPA is the agency, like you know, like scientists slash military people who figure shit out. I'm pretty sure they're gonna give the give the contract to somebody, right? Uh, like uh, you, you know Northrop or something uh, because when it comes to like spy related things like stealth Northrop is good I'm guessing I don't know uh, B2 and things like that right uh, uh, Nighthawk they're, these are all Northrops I'm pretty sure yeah but I don't know I don't know uh, this is gonna be interesting this is by the channel Sandbox Sandbox is a great channel for things things like this uh, he's one of the experts and the people who are in like connections, right? Uh, even the big channels usually like uh, name him as like a great source. So he should have like he's a he's a four hundred thousand subscriber. He should have in millions by now. That's how good he is, I guess. But yeah, that's always fun. DARPA and Northrop Grumman just unveiled a new X plane that they wanted. Of course, it's Northrop. I just said it. Of course, it's Northrop. See, my knowledge is growing. I can predict shit now, apparently. To rush into service to meet what they call a quote urgent operational need. And while they didn't disclose what that need is, I've got my suspicions. So let's talk about the XRQ 73 Shepard, which is short for series high hybrid electric propulsion aircraft demonstrator because while that may be a mouthful the tech the fuck you just said what do you mean electric propulsion technology crammed into this exotic flying wing may just represent the future of intelligent surveillance and reconnaissance aircraft now as we've discussed lots of times in the past despite the prevalence of spy satellites today the u.s military is still very reliant on intelligence surveillance what do you mean electric propulsion? Using fans or something? Jet fans or something? But yeah, electric motor. Yeah, electric motor running a jet flame, a jet uh, fan, basically. Makes sense. Battery powered. But how big of battery? Is, uh, the only reason I think that wouldn't work, is, at least right now, like I've thought about it in the past, but like batteries are so heavy. Even in sport cars, that's an issue. If you're like a massive sport car, Right? I'm not talking about Teslas, right? Teslas uh, are not sport car really. But Teslas are like usually known for going straight line because of their Mahusi batteries, that cornering is not really a thing. But there are many companies, um, I'm forgetting the name, but who makes sports car, right? Grand Tour shows it, uh, showed it basically, where Hammond crashed one of them, right? Uh, from Croatia. The problem with them is the weight goes really high because of the big ass batteries that you need. The bigger the range, bigger the things, bigger the power, you need even bigger batteries. So it's just like, um, I, I don't know how, you know, like proportionally how difference that makes. Like the more power you increase, you also need more batteries. But it's just like, how much, is it equal one by one? Maybe it's not equal one by one. Even bigger batteries can produce even more power. So you can just like, you know, scale that up. Who knows? Surveillance and Reconnaissance, or ISR, aircraft. And all throughout the global war on terror, Uncle Sam invested heavily into fielding entire fleets of new ISR platforms, like the MQ-9 Reaper. But that poses a real problem. 
because these aircraft were designed to operate in the uncontested airspaces over nations like Iraq or Afghanistan, making them very juicy targets for really any adversary with any kind of air defense capabilities to speak of. And we've seen the repercussions of this already, with the U.S. losing at least three MQ-9 Reapers in the vicinity of Yemen over just the past 18 months or so. And now Russia claiming to have shot down an RQ-4 Global Hawk over the Black Sea just yesterday. Though to be clear, those claims have yet to be substantiated. The plain truth of the matter is, the U.S. now has a pressing need to field more survivable ISR aircraft, to maintain that same high degree of situational awareness the U.S. military is accustomed to having even when fighting against much more yeah but what about the uh, son of uh, blackbird sr-72 that is what that that's a spy plane sr right what is it called something reconnaissance right special reconnaissance whatever so it's whole that's why blackbird was there to do a spy thing in the cold war but now this sr-72 which is unmanned craft which is also fast uh, if you're that fast, can you really be taken? Like, I don't know what is the speed of that, but I'm pretty sure it's really high. But yeah, there's like missiles can track it down, right? I don't know. Uh, you can make it stealthy and shit. Like, do you need drone like uh, aircraft like this, which can get taken down? I don't know. Capable adversaries. And that is where platforms like the XRQ 73 come in. Now, this platform was based on the previous XRQ-72A Great Horned Owl, which was revealed to the world back in 2020 in a feature published by the War Zone. Now, this aircraft had a unique hybrid electric propulsion system that powered four ducted fans that it used for propulsion at the back, effectively replacing the turbofan engines you would usually find tucked away in the fuselage of a stealth aircraft like this with electric generators that power electric motors, and that could make these aircraft stealthier than any other ISR platform in the world. Because not only does it leverage that radar-wicking plane form, very similar to another Northrop Grumman platform that we often call... I mean, yeah, that, uh, generators can basically uh, generate power for the batteries. You can have smaller generators, but a lot of them... It's not one engine that you need to make big so it can have this kind of like a heat and like smoke signature that can be tracked. Smaller multiple generators uh, that doesn't produce that much heat because they're smaller and sp spread out like generating power for the batteries. And batteries are more efficient than uh, generators so it's like it's not one one thing. The, the level of fuel a generator would use if you put directly that into like fan that would have less energy than if you charge the battery and battery fuels the fan. That's how hybrid cars work, right? So that makes sense. The RQ-180, but it also would have next to no thermal signature, as those electric motors would produce so much less heat than a turbofan engine might that most thermal targeting systems probably wouldn't even notice it. And that means you've got a spy plane that's not only exceedingly difficult to detect, track, or target on radar, but also is next to impossible to target with infrared guided or heat seeking. Oh, yeah, exactly. It's not just about radars. Like, most missiles need heat. That's how they target. Like, you know, target-seeking missiles. How do they seek? Through heat. So now you, you need somebody, like a dog fighting plane or something, trying to aim shit down with, the, like, machine guns or something, or, like, direct firing rocket without actually tracking one, because they can track it. It's not just about the radar. Seeking missiles. And that's just the beginning of the benefits of this hybrid propulsion system because it would also mean all but eliminating the acoustic signature of this aircraft when flying in its stealthiest profile. You wouldn't even hear an aircraft flying in the sky above you if this thing was overhead. And on top of all that, this hybrid combustion to electric system could offer a huge increase in operational range and endurance, meaning this aircraft could potentially stay airborne for even longer than the ISR platforms we have in service today, with aircraft like the MQ-9 already flying missions that exceed 24 hours in duration. Now, DARPA wasn't very forthcoming with details about this new aircraft, but they did say that it's classified as a Group 3 UAS, or Unmanned Aerial System. But that doesn't narrow it down all that much. Group 3 platforms are characterized by aircraft that can fly at altitudes of between 3,500 and 180,000 feet. They weigh in at between 55 and 1,320 pounds, and they can fly at speeds of between 100 and 200 
150 knots, or around 115 to 290 miles per hour. But they did also disclose that this aircraft's overall weight, including mission systems, is at right around 1,250 pounds, the top end of this classification. And we can use that figure to extrapolate what its wingspan might be, because, as I said before, this aircraft was based on the XRQ-72A, which weighed under 400 pounds and had a wingspan of about 30 feet. Now, Yeah, like I said, if you introduce batteries, yeah, she's gonna go up. Yeah, 1,200 pounds makes sense. Because things are gonna get heavier and heavier, because that's how... Battery technology is one of the oldest technology we have now. That's the limiting factor in today's world, especially when you want to make everything electric. Battery cells are not that good, right? We need something better. But it's like, <laughs> that's the thing, how you gotta like, you can't just say like, make something better than battery cells. Like, okay, what, what do you want me to do, right? Usually some innovation, like some kind of a, like a targeted thinking brings together really smart people and they figure shit out. That's how it happened in Apollo program. That's how it happens in NASA generally, right? Those grooves on like, you know, like in motorways and highways, whatever. Right, when you turn and there are grooves there, that was created by NASA. Why? Because they wanted to make sure the, uh, the spacecraft that came, comes back stays stable. It doesn't spin around when it, whenever it hits the, uh, you know, like tarmac, right, uh, to slow down. They realize that, wait a minute, this shit is happening, so let's create these grooves that will stabilize the aircraft. Wait a minute, we can do the same shit on highways, so people, if they go a bit higher speed, for whatever reason, right? Like they forgot to break or whatever. They don't crash and, and drop down from the like bridges or highways and things. So let's put grooves on there. So, you know, nobody's just gonna like, point blank, oh, let's create some new thing than battery cell. You need some like direction, like going to the moon, which they are doing right now, going to the Mars, right? Creating this kind of like a uh, ridiculous frontiers, like somebody will do something creative. Now, if the relationship between weight and wingspan were linear, that would mean this aircraft could have a wingspan as large as 90 feet, which is about the size of three F-16s sitting side by side. But weight is a measure of volume, which does not increase in a linear... What is that plane that was like flying way too high where you can see space, which was, which was also a spy plane, if I remember correctly, which had like the, the black plane that had this like insane wingspan? And it had to be like, uh, you know, like, you know, like a car had to drive behind it. I usually saw Charger or Charger for whatever reason. Is that a government car? I don't know. But yeah, I'll, you know, like they have to like say like, okay, do this, do this. Like somebody has to tell you what to do, right? Because that's how long wingspan is. That plane, right? I forgot the name of that. But that has that kind of insane wingspan. So this is probably not an issue way, so instead it's more likely that its wingspan is in the neighborhood of around 44 feet, or just a bit bigger than an F-15 Eagle. But as groundbreaking as this Shepard spy plane could truly be, by now you might be thinking, wait a minute. X-Planes aren't supposed to just be funneled into production programs, they're supposed to be technology demonstrators showing the viability of emerging technologies that are usually not ready for the battlefield yet. And You'd be right, but that's also a focus of this program. As DARPA disclosed back in 2021, they see this XRQ-73 program as a, quote, bridge across technology's valley of death. That valley being the gap between technologies they can demonstrate in single prototypes and technology demonstrators and technologies that are mature and robust enough to be used on the battlefield. They're hoping that the methodology they've used to mature from the XRQ 72A to now the XRQ 73 could. What does that? What does that even mean? Somebody creates some kind of prototype. They put X on there because it's a prototype because it's like DARPA and like whatever the people, uh, military people, didn't approve of it yet. When they approve of it whatever kings that they want to remove or whatever like, economical issues they want to remove because they also think about money, then you put it into production because you actually need those planes to work and whatever budget, that is what it is. If you just take the X plane and just use it, you essentially created the final product anyway. I don't understand that whole mentality. It's like, is that, is that what you're saying? Like, we create too many prototypes and somebody from the con Congress butts in and like ruins it. So we're just going to use the X plane from now. Fuck it. We don't want to like have a final say from anyone. As soon as you create a prototype, that's the plane. Let's use it. I mean, it's like, you know, like dodge some red tape or something. Could be that. ...be replicated in future programs to shorten that gap between emerging technologies and battlefield capabilities.
Though to be clear, that doesn't necessarily mean the XRQ-73 itself will enter operational service, though that's certainly possible. It could also be a similar platform that uses the same hybrid electric propulsion system matured through XRQ-73 testing. And when I say they're moving fast, I mean it. According to DARPA's press release, they intend to start test flights of this aircraft before the end of this year. Yeah. Let's be honest, we all know why they're doing that. They see the writing on the wall. I don't know if that's the right phrase to use. Basically, they see the world going to war. And that's like, we have to like amp up everything. Let's go. America, America's one features I've seen throughout the years is paranoia. Mostly paranoia. That's how F-15 was there. Oh my God, they have, you know, Fox bad. That's insane. We need to create something better. Now that wasn't insane. And you created something insane out of paranoia. Apollo program. Oh my God, the Russia, Soviet Union is going to be in space. We have to go there first. And there you go, Apollo program. So now world is at war. Oh my, by the way, Taiwan thing might happen. Oh, China is overtaking us. And everybody goes into panic mode. That's what this is. Short on the time. Like, let's test this year. Let's create something next year. We need 10 years. Now you get two. That's what's happening now. So in the next 10 years, we're going to see really ridiculous technology going up and up, right? That's why even NASA is getting budget to oh, go to the moon, go to the Mars. We need more technology. We need more innovation. We need to flex a bit, right? Because suddenly now there's a moon mission going on. Many missions NASA is working on right now. That wasn't even there yeah, just a few years or decade ago. But yeah. Yeah, DARPA is insane, right? DARPA is just like somebody uh, really need to make comprehensive documentary level video on DARPA itself to show the world, like big channel, to show the world like how insane DARPA is and how DARPA is literally leading a lot of tech, like whatever they do, right? But yeah, probably if you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.